Okay, we got the hind quarter here, and uh, we're just going to open it up through the muscle groups. And if you see this line right here, that's where I open it up. So I'm coming right in, and all I'm doing is following the muscle group. And you can see that all you got to do is stay in, in between the membrane on the muscles. And you're taking this all the way up. And this is why it is so important in the field that you keep your meat clean. Your processing time will be a lot easier. The quality of meat's a lot better. And this, this is actually my favorite cut for jerky. And uh, there's your piece right there. And of course you're going to trim off all the bloodshot, any uh, fat. Typically we don't eat the fat that's on a wild game. If it goes in the crock pot, sometimes we'll leave it on. Now what I like to do here is with a fillet knife, I'll come in and just cut that membrane away. And then that's all uh, ground up for dog food. So that's your first cut. And we're coming in. Now once you take that cut out, your bone is right here. So your bone, bone, you can see the hip bone right there. So what I do is I cut right out around and I follow that, find that bone and then I just cut and peel the meat right off. Now where that knee is, you can see the, the knee right there, go a little in front and back and you're going to cut back and you expose that bone. You can always be removing that, that blood shot if, you're, if you have some of that in there. You don't want to eat that. And all we're doing, you can see, is I'm just staying with that muscle group. Going right to the bone. Cutting that right off. I got two chunks of meat there. I'm going to make a cut right here in the center. These are great for roast, steak. We should cut. I'll show you a good roast right here. And that's why it's so important to leave that membrane on. It, it actually uh, protects the meat until you get it back. Then you can take it open it up and actually peel it off. And uh, there's your nice roast right there. And then the rest of this is kind of a hamburger. What I do is I get the fillet knife. I'll come in and cut away all the fat. And it's almost like skinning a fish. I find that that membrane and just come cut that right off. When you do it, that helps clean up the meat. A lot of that is, uh, you know, hair, a little bit of dirt. You don't want to eat that. And same with this piece, coming right in, cutting the fat off. All that gets ground up at the end for the dog. Now see how that membrane is right there? What I'll do on all my pieces of meat is I'll cut. This is for burger and I just go right along that. That way I got a nice clean piece of meat. And I'm, I'm cutting that gristle and, uh, and fat away. It makes your burger a lot, uh, a lot better eating, a lot leaner. 
So those are your cuts right there. And then we move on to the, uh, the calf muscle. We cut the tendon and then we're just following that, that muscle group. A lot of times you can use your fingers to feel right where it's at. There's your calf muscle, and that one too is a uh, real good roast. Throw that in the crock pot. Now there's a lot of good meat on that shin bone, and what I do is I follow that, that bone. You can see the difference. You see the bone and the meat, and I'll come right along that. And I always hold up from the tendon, go right on around. And we're just staying tight to the bone, trying to get all that meat off of there. And there's some, uh, there'll be some tough tendons, almost like bone in there. So you gotta come a little bit further back away. So uh, that's everything popped off that hind quarter. Now with this, I come right in with the fillet knife and I fillet that membrane right off of there. That way you got a clean piece of meat. Same on the other side. We're just filleting that right out. You can throw that in a burger or give it to the dog food. So that's the hind quarter right there. There's your cuts of meat. Okay, we're moving on to the uh, front shoulder. Front shoulder is a little bit harder to do than the back uh, just because there's not as much meat. I always like to kind of trim it up before I even start. Uh, it helps you get the dirt and stuff off the meat so you're not contaminating it. And all we're doing is just cutting the, that stuff off that way we don't contaminate the meat once we uh, open it up so with the uh, the front shoulder you cut this off okay so what we do on that front shoulder is we start up on the shoulder blade there's actually a bone that crests right here and that is the shoulder blade what we want to do is cut right along the side of that and we're coming down all the way to, to the blade. And we're just peeling that, staying tight right to that, that shoulder blade, rolling it off. And uh, coming right around down the bone. And you can see that hit that elbow. You're going to come right around. You're going to find right where those joints are. You're, we're cutting right against the bone. And uh, your front shoulder is typically going to be either, you know, you might get some jerky out of it, uh, some small steaks, but typically I make the whole thing in the hamburger. The Axis Deer, the hamburger is phenomenal. Some of the mildest uh, game you'll ever have. So there's, there's a chunk of meat. So now we're gonna come the other side of that bone. And again, where that knee is, we're just make, gonna make an incision right there. Come back. And of course, someone's got to call us. And all we're doing is just staying tight to the bone. And you can see that, that hip bone. And being as this is a hamburger, we're just, we're not too worried about the cut of the meat. Mainly just getting it off the bone. 
and then we can clean it up. So the back side of that, we're going to cut right along the bone as well. And we just peel it right off the bone. And some of you guys are probably asking why I'm not using the Mako. And uh, you know, the Mako's great for in the field, but I'm setting my ways on uh, back in the kitchen. A little bit uh, easier to use, a little bit quicker. I've been practicing, but I still feel more comfortable with my, my old timer knife. Had it since I was 12 years old. Great knife, holds an edge. So we, we got that off the shoulder blade. You can actually pop this off right there. Dismember it, give it to the dogs. You can give that to the dogs. And we're coming right at that joint. And uh, just coming right off the bone. You can't go wrong if you always stay tight to the bone, follow the muscle groups. And just cut right around that knuckle. And then that's all, all hamburger. Same thing on the shin. We turn it to the inside so we can see that shin bone. Same thing, we come to the front of that. If you try to get too close to that, you're going to hit the tendons. You know, go with your knife. And then I like to cut back about an inch off that tendon. And that shank is all just real gristly. Best thing for it is burger. But uh, a lot of good meat on those, the front uh, shin. Well worth packing out. So we can trim the rest of the, you know, the rest of the meat. If you've got some kids to help you, they can be trimming that up. So you're not wasting anything. Giving that to the, throwing that right in the burger. Now when I get to the, uh, the shank, the cap is I'll just peel it out the same way and get that that film off as you can see that's all dirty we don't want to eat that we got a couple of clean pieces of meat there and uh, basically you can do this with with any piece of uh, meat to help clean it up because you're cutting that white gristle off of there Coming back through and cleaning, uh, cleaning up the meat, taking off the fat, uh, getting it ready to throw into the grinder, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, the front shoulder. Okay, we're uh, moving on to the back strap, and I always leave the film on it. And what I'll do uh, once I get it to the kitchen, I'll turn it over, and I'll make a cut right down the center. I don't go all the way through. And then I turn my knife, just like you're skinning a fish. And you can take that film right off. Sometimes you get it good, sometimes you don't. But you can come right back. And I'll turn it around, do the same thing the other way. And uh, there's your film. There's your nice clean uh, back strap. If you happen to don't hit it for the first time, you can come right down the side. And, 
no, you're just cleaning up that that membrane. It's all hard gristle. And a, a lot of times I'll actually leave that on uh, and throw it in the freezer just like that. That way it uh, helps protect it against freezer burn. So that's your back strap. Your tenderloins, you really don't have to do much with them. Uh, typically those never make it to the freezer. A lot of times the back strap too uh, never makes it to the freezer. It gets eaten uh, right away. Okay, then we got the heart. The heart, uh, you just cut this up basically the same way. You're going to open it up and uh, basically you're just cutting all the, the gristle off. And I, I like to actually uh, throw it right in the pan, garlic, little butter. And you take it, all that off. And then you're just uh, slicing it into fillets. Into eatable chunks. You can bread it, throw it right on the grill. And uh, just open that right up. Take those arteries off. And uh, always worthwhile to bring the heart out. You can see you're popping those off. And you're just cleaning it up. So there's your heart. It goes right in the frying pan. We're going to eat that before we're done. We got the rib cage. Uh, we don't do anything with it. Just kind of cut off, clean it up a little bit. Uh, you got three options. You can throw it on the barbecue. You can throw it in the smoker. Or you can cut it up and throw it, slow cook it in the crock pot. Either way is delicious. Okay, so we're uh, cutting up the burger. And all we're doing is cutting cube sized pieces, throwing it in the hopper. And uh, when we get a piece that's got a lot of gristle on it like that, typically you want to cut that off. So we're just coming in and cutting that right off of there. And that gristle, we want to uh, get as much of that fat gristle off of there. And every time you cut the gristle off, you're, you're cleaning the meat. So every time I make a cut, if there's gristle there, I'll open it up. So it's all good hamburger right here. And all we're doing is uh, cutting it up, cubing it up, making sure one more time it's all clean. If we get any gristle in there, we're cutting all that out. That was all actually the nick meat. Throw that right in the hopper. And we just got a one horse uh, meat grinder. Okay, so we got all the uh, scrap meat in uh, one bin and after we have ground all the burger, all the good meat, then we come through and grind up all the, uh, the scrap meat for the dogs. And that's what we got right here. back on the back straps and uh, we're gonna make chicken fried steak out of these so we're gonna take and cut them into two inch pieces inch and a half and then we're gonna butterfly them so we take that piece cut it almost all the way through open it up how you butterfly a piece of meat make it twice as big okay now we're going to take it over to the cuber now 
then that little piece of meat uh, ends up being a big steak. Chicken fried steak early in the morning for dinner, uh, bread it in uh, egg, flour, and fry it, and it is delicious. Stress in the camera room. You ready? And five, four, three. Okay, four hours later, we're done processing uh, three bucks. The last thing we're doing is putting them in the food saver bags. Uh, these will last two to three years in the freezer as long as you don't puncture them. And uh, we just lock it in there, suck all the air out. And then we wait for it to seal once it sucked all the air out. And the next best thing we're going to be doing is eating all the meat. Okay, so uh, there you have it. That is uh, how to process the game once you get it back to the kitchen. Till next time, happy hunting.